In the following seminar on sports management, Mr. Ron Lee, the Director of Community Relations and Marketing from the Hong Kong Sports Institute, discusses sports marketing in Hong Kong. He provides a definition of marketing and explores some case studies that show the difference between marketing from sports and marketing through sports. He also asks an important question. Does Hong Kong have a sports market? He then gives some examples that illustrate his answer to this question. For today, I would like to share with you what is sports marketing. What is marketing is we use certain methods, medium, procedure to make you purchase or engage with a service or a product. Very, very, very simple example. You watch an advertisement of Nike, new shoes, and then you go to the Nike shop and then you buy a shoe. It's a process of marketing. But I would like to share with you to understand the role of marketing in sports. And, and what is the difference between marketing from sports or through sports? Understand consumer and product of sport. This is our objectives for today. After today, I would like you to understand these three areas. Okay, could you tell me? This is marketing of sports or marketing through sports. Do you understand the difference of marketing of sports or marketing through sports, eh? Not, not, not yet. I haven't, I haven't explained it to you, but I would like to, to test your common sense if you understand any. Tell me this picture. Is this marketing through sports or marketing of sports? Through sports. Hands up. Yes, correct. How about this one? This is actually a sports, a golf competition with world number one Feng San San of China playing in front of a uh, Omega billboard. Do you think this is marketing through sport or this is marketing off sports? I'm marketing the golf or I'm marketing through golf of Omega? So it's through or off. This is still marketing through sports because Omega bought a huge billboard at this particular golf tournament and make sure the TV capture it and then all the golfers, all the golf lovers when they watch TV or they're on site watching the event, they see the exposures of Omega. Okay, the tricky one. Michael Phelps, during the Olympic Games, raising his hand, I want another medal. This picture is marketing through sports of, or marketing of sports. I am promoting swimming or I am promoting Omega. To be exact, Omega as an official timer for Olympic, he paid a lot of money. Make sure all the touchpad has an Omega logo. It means that whoever wins this Olympic medal, when they touch the touchpad, it shows Omega logo. And make sure they will capture this kind of picture. Exactly, they are the same. They're marketing through sport. We pay money to a sporting event and get, and get exposures. This is the same. So all these four pictures is marketing through sports. And on an everyday practice, you will see a lot of marketing or advertising or social media, they make use of sports to sell their products. Okay, marketing is an exchange between two parties that provide a win-win benefits. It means that I have something and you have something. We work together, we're marketing through it, and then we through an exchange process. It could be a value of money or time or human resources to achieve a win-win situation. Okay. We go back to our very first um, marketing of sports. Marketing of sports, the definition is we marketing and advertise sports events, sports event itself. So it means I promote golf, I promote tennis, I promote basketball. It's advertising, it's marketing of sports. I could promote teams as well. I promote the Russian team, I promote the UK team, I promote the Hong Kong team. Athletes, I promote LeBron James, I promote Duran. I'm promoting them. They are actually the sports itself. It could be events, teams, athletes, etc., etc. Marketing through sports. It means that a product, and it's not necessary to be a sports product. Coca-Cola is not a sports product. Video game is not a sports product. Skato is not a sports product. Ma Yun and Alibaba Cloud is not a sports product. But they make use of sports to promote themselves. For Olympic Games, 
they have very selected worldwide partners, which is on the very, very high level, the top tier Olympic sponsors. Alibaba Crowd will be the next Olympic official partner. In the old days, we never think of a crowd service to work with Olympics. And now you may not understand what the Alibaba Cloud can work with Olympic. What is the benefit that Alibaba Cloud can give to Olympics besides money? But they can give a lot of technology. Okay, 10 years ago, when you watch NBA at home, you watch through your TV set, eh? your pay TV, ESPN, Now Sport, whatever. Nowadays, when you watch NBA, it's not necessary to be at home, eh? Your mobile, your iPad. Ten years ago, when you're watching NBA, you only watch NBA, I listened to my colleague Peter Jung to give you all the statistics. Okay, this is the 300 shot that's shot by LeBron James, etc., etc. But now, you may log on on a second screen for all the data. You understand that the next shot for LeBron James will be at the 300 points that he's going to shoot, or the 103 points that he's going to shoot, because you have two screens. One is the actual live for the actions. One is all the statistics. Imagine Alibaba Crowd, how much information they can process, how much information they can give, how much infrastructure in terms of internet, in terms of cloud to provide to Olympics. This is a kind of promotion to put Alibaba Cloud on the world map. Everyone of any country, if they participate Olympics, they may have a chance, they may have a glimpse to understand what is Alibaba Cloud. And on top of this, they, they are only not paying money to the Olympic, but also they have PR events. Jack Ma, Buck. Buck is the uh, president of IOC. He used to be a uh, West Germany fencer in my decade. Two Olympics senior than me. This kind of conference, this kind of talk, it generates a lot of uh, synergy on online, on social media. They would like to listen to Mark and Buck, what they talk about the crowd, what they talk about the, the cooperation, etc., etc. So it's leveraged not only on sponsorship, but also on PRs, public relations. Coca-Cola. You find Coca-Cola and Olympic is normal because Coca-Cola has been sponsored Olympic for many, many years. And every year when you drink Coca-Cola during the Olympic, you will expect the five rings as on the bottles. Only the top tier of the sponsorship of Olympics, they can use these five rings on their logos. And also, marketing food sports, video games. Have you ever imagined that we use uh, Mario to play an Olympic Games, to play sports when you were young, 10 years ago. But nowadays, sports has become an international language. Sports can easy to assess of anyone, especially youngsters like you. So all this is example is to make use of sports to promote a known sport product. This is marketing through sports. So the entire marketing process, we have a little bit different circles has to be something with value that we will exchange because we won't work for nothing. You won't sell something for nothing. So it could be money, it could be time. Personal, it means HR resources. And on the other hand is, after you pay such money, what you get? You get entertained. When we go to a uh, NBA games inside the venue, you get entertained by the NBA players for four, four sections. Better quality of life. You pay some money to physical, you do gym, enhance your image. You pay something to buy new LeBron James versions of Nike basketball shoes and you go to the basketball court, you find yourself, maybe I will jumpsuit like LeBron James. This is kind of enhanced your image. This is all the value that we exchange through the, mar uh, the marketing of sports. I would like to use some cases to go through with you what is marketing, more is uh, sports marketing, etc. Mary is a very typical soccer mom. Have a boys, they play soccer, when they come back, the jersey is very, very dirty. The mother wants to persuade the local dry cleaner to provide some kinds of uh, sponsorship. I am the mother. I don't want to wash my kids' clothes after they play soccer, it's so dirty. So I would like to get a laundry shop to clean all my boys' shirts. 
I will put your logo there. This is very, very primary sponsorship. It's a primary sports marketing stuff. This is one case. Remember Mary. George is the president of a local chamber of commerce. In the coming 10 years, he has to think of a plan to promote a sports, not only for his metropolitan, but also would like to draw the intention and draw the national vis visibility to promote his city. I have a tongue. I'd say I, I, I'm the king of Shatin right now, okay? I have to think of my citizens for the next 10 years, which sport is good for my Shatin tongue. And also, if I promote this sport, not only good for the health or for the benefit of my citizens, but also I can promote Shatin in a whole. So, what sort of sports I have to think of? How, will I, how can I balance of promoting in sports and promoting my county? promoting my shot in. Sam is an event coordinator. He uh, organized the 10K road race to raise funds for a, uh, diseases to help the charity. But how much should I charge to participate in? How much they have to pay to come to run for this 10K? Not easy. We're talking about a pricing strategy, which is very important for marketing as well. Because how much your product costs or how much your service costs will really, really affect your revenue, your sales, and your entire company. This is much more high level. Peter. Peter is an athletic director of a university. One of the universities is playing very well in the NCAA recently. So ESPN would like to live broadcast their competition. But the problem is in United States, East Coast and West Coast, there's a time difference. So the ESPN would like to broadcast the NCAA football of this particular university. Is this good? Very good. But the problem is the university, they sell, they sell tickets to local people. And ESPN requests the game to be played 10 p.m. at night. If it's a weekend, no problem. But the problem is two of the games are on weekdays. If it's a weekdays game, a basketball match around two hours, if it starts at 10 p.m. local time, they finish by midnight. And next day, they have to go to work. It will affect my ticket sales, especially through ticket for the entire years. How can I balance it? It is also a marketing thing that we have to think of. So this is some typical marketing thing that we have to think of, we have to overcome. But all of this is what? It's all happy problem. It means that you have customer, you have people support your stuff. The only thing you have to think of is the balance, the two things. Okay, Mary. What is the motive of Mary? What does she want? She wants someone to wash the kids' clothes. So, it's very straightforward. She's looking for laundry company. But besides laundry company, anything that she can looking for. Have you think of a Filipino's agent? It could do. Have you think of washing detergent company? Could do. Because all she wants is very simple, very direct. He would like to have a sponsorship to associate the surface with the kids. So anything can wash the clothes. It could be detergent, it could be the maid itself, it could be the laundry company. So he has, she has a lot of uh, target to go for. And usually this kind of sponsorship involves no money. It's an exchange of service because it's so minimal. Even this is uh, invisible apart from the county, apart from the area that the soccer team will play. So this is very normal, very basic stuff. George, so what you have to do, remember what is George going to, to, to have to do? 10 years to develop a sports and to promote uh, his county. So usually what do you think of? If, okay, I'll give you some scenario. Your town has 100,000 people and the uh, demographic is male and female, more or less 50-50. And the age is very young, in between 20 to 40. It's the majority <coughs> of the entire 100,000 people. For the next 10 years, they may grow from 20 to 30, from 40 to 50. So they're still in a very young period of their uh, productivity. What sports do you promote? And this sports could be visible to the entire country. Running, yes, easy. And 
I tell you, it could be anything. It could be anything. You just take a research, just like before I start the course, take a research and see what they're like. And then on the other hand, you have a match of the commercial that's situated at your county. So if Nike headquarters is at your side, you go to Nike. What is the next sport they would like to promote with us? If not, there's nothing related to sports. You may think of something, make use of all the data, you do your analyze. This is what we would like you to understand is when there's a situation, there's a more than one solution that you can take, that you can consider. But all you have to do is you put all the data on your table, swimming, jogging, blah, 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 and then compare, and then find the best solution. It's not only applied to sports marketing, it applies to everything. When you finish your courses here, you take a look of the LCSD, you may take a look of my company, Hong Kong Sports Institute, you may take a look of Nike, Adidas, put all the jobs on your table. I don't mean they will offer you jobs, okay? You just analyze which one is best suit to you. But the fundamental is trying to find a job that you like rather than that you like the salary, okay? You must like your job nature, and then salary will come. Trust me. Trust me. I like sports. At the very beginning, when I was an elite athlete, I get paid. I get paid to fans. It was during the 80s. During the 80s, when I go to the market, I can easily make three to 4000 a month. For example, I went to do a part-time at Watson's from Watson's personal store. 10 o'clock in the morning to 2 o'clock, I got 2,000. But you know how much I get paid for my fencing per month? 1,500. But I like sports very much. And because I like sports very much, I devoted myself to sports, and then I make my money right now, okay? Sam, I would like to uh, raise funds for the charity. How much should I charge? It's a pricing strategy. Okay, give you a hint. First of all, I may look at some other similar running event, how much they charge, right? If a Hong Kong Marathon 10K charge you 350 and they do nothing to charity, I may think of 350 the same. But added value is when the people pay this 350, they have a social feeling that I support charity already. So it may be 350 or because I have the added value, should I charge 400? Because they know they pay a little bit more for the charity. Or I would like to get more people to participate. I charge 300, cheaper than the 350, but they have the added value of the charity. This is a kind of thinking of process you have to consider. And if you consider it for a longer term, if you run this event for three years or five years, your pricing strategy should think of five years. So this year, I may charge 300. Next year, I add 10%. And then based on the participants, how many participants I've got, I may reconsider the third year. Maybe I charge more, or the participant is less than I expected, I may charge less. But remember, remember, if you set a price, the only trans, the only trend that you can charge is more. Even though you have less participation, you charge more. You know why? Because some things reduce the price, you will find the quality is no good. Pricing is really a, a art. It's not a technique, it's an art. Okay, if you, you, you study sports marketing, if you study business, I would like you to open your eyes. Don't only read the news in Hong Kong in Chinese. And not only reading news in English, try to read some news in Europe but not the Western Europe news. Try to go to the Russian website in English version. See the Russian perspective to the news. Go to the Chinese CCTV to see their perspective. Go to the American. For the same news, internationally, you take different perspective. Sometimes if you go to the French website, go to their English version. Look at the French, how the French look at the American people. Look at the French, how they look at the uh, UK people and the Chinese people and the Russian people. It will broaden your horizon. It gives you a very good analytical training to understand the world more. Because nowadays, when you grow up, when you go out the market, it's not only a Hong Kong market, it's a global market. It's not necessarily to be a China market as well. Because all the Western 
teach all the Western kids, all the Western university students, they will go to Asia. The next frontier for economic is the entire Asia, not only China, but China will be the big engine for the entire Asia Pacific. This is your market, and this is your sports marketing market in the future. Peter, ESPN, live broadcast my university NCAA game. But I have to, to delay my game to start at 10 p.m. in the evening. What should I do? Okay, easy. We waited. When ESPN broadcasts my university game, it means that they will pay us a certain money for the rice fee. Because otherwise, I will not give them to do the live. And also, because of the ESPN, which is a worldwide, not only nationwide in the United States, but also in elsewhere in the world, so our university will be visible to a lot of global citizens. But I have to delay my games. Is there any compromise? Could I negotiate with ESPN 10 p.m.? What about 9? Line makes sense. After the game, it is 11. Two weekdays game? Can we do one weekend games and one weeknights game, et cetera, et cetera? You can negotiate, you can try to compromise, and then you will find the balance between two. And you find, if we can find the balance between two, you may go ahead. If not, then you have to look into what? Look into the political situation. Political situation doesn't mean this is, gov this is government. It could be a university. It could be a, any association or any, any closed area. Okay, let me explain it. The director of this uh, university, if he sell it to ESPN, but he may uh, have to delay the game, and a lot of ticket holders, a lot of people may not like it. And then they will, they will what? They will go to the university and complain. And my boss will talk to me, why you delay the game at 10? Uh, because it's ESPN. But uh, this is uh, the big shot in here. This is our uh, sponsors of the university. They buy through ticket, etc. This is another political pressure. It may make the things uh, complicated. I, I will not go further, but this is the real situation that we have to consider. It's not only the games on TV and the tickets at 10 o'clock. We go to the another thing. What is sports marketing? Who's he? Michael Jordan. What Michael Jordan will be presented for? Basketball. Besides basketball? Victory. Besides basketball, besides victory? What is this? It's a Jordan band. <laughs> is it? <laughs> Anything you think of Michael Jordan? A legend, a icon. Who is he? Fundamentally, who is Michael Jordan? Yes. Who said basketball player? Yes. Michael Jordan is a basketball player. That's it. Nothing. He's a basketball player. But because his achievement, he represents a lot, a lot of different things. <coughs> Who is she? Asana. The most beautiful fair, uh, flag player during the last Olympics. After that, you see her all over in Hong Kong from social media, from events, from advertising, not necessarily to be sports. She is an icon for what? For swimming? No. She's an icon, she's an icon for sports and beauty. As simple as this. But fundamentally, who is she? A Hong Kong swimmer. What is sports marketing? Very interesting. It's not only sports. Swimmer, basketball player. This is the sports. But the extension of what they can achieve is not only sports. It could be anything. So I would put this word very heavily, passion. If you have passion of sports, you will admire Michael Jordan, and you may like this young, beautiful lady. But if you don't have any passion of sports, she's just another girl. He's just another basketball player, right? Okay, usually for sports marketing, we have these elements. We use broadcasting, advertising, social media. What is different between social media and digital platforms? Social media is your Instagram, your Snapchat. Digital platform is all the website. Okay, all the website is the digital platform. It's part of the digital platform. Ticket sales community relations. Okay, look at here. 
When you go to a sports event, you see broadcasting. If there's no broadcasting, you cannot watch any sports live at any time, anywhere. Your Facebook, your digital platform to enhance your watching experience. And for community relations, David Beckham go to the editor shop with the fans. This is a kind of uh, very below the line activities in terms of marketing, advertisement. All this combination will make a sports marketing in a whole. I will take this particular event in Hong Kong to explain. This is the Hong Kong Prudential WTA Tennis happening uh, usually in October in Hong Kong, in Victoria Park. This is a sporting event. All you have to do, you buy a ticket, go to the Victoria Park and see the girls playing tennis. That's it. But the marketer leverage this. We talk about broadcasting. So this event is broadcasted through TV. International TV and also local TV as well. Advertisement. You will see the giant billboard at the tunnel or elsewhere in Hong Kong during the events. Social media. How can we create some social media buzz? This is in Lee Garden in Causeway Bay. We work with uh, Xbox. We ask the two star players when they are in Hong Kong, they go to Lee Garden. Lee Garden is the sponsor, that's why we go to Lee Garden. And then they play Xbox. Why? Because Xbox is also a sponsor. And they play virtual tennis. And then we put this on social media. And it promote what? It promote Lee Garden, it promote Xbox, and it promote the event and the players themselves. We put the former world number one in Lee Garden to take some stand picture, put it on social media as well, to what? To call for action, to buy tickets, to go to the event as well. Community relations. It's very important elements nowadays in marketing. We go to the elderly center, ask the foreign girl to cook Chinese food for our elderly at the elderly center. It goes to what? It goes to newspaper. It goes to TV. And it drives what? It drives all the marketing for the entire event. So this is how we make use of a sporting event to achieve different goals than to assess to different people. Look at this picture. Tell me what you notice. This picture. Chelsea versus Man U. What color is it? Okay, first of all, what is this picture? This is a capture of your TV screens, right? Menu, what is menu color? Red. You see any red here? Yes, only the logo. All in blue. Samsung is in blue. Chelsea is in blue. The jersey is in blue. Why? Is this a coincidence or this is a planned action? I tell you, this is a really planned action. Subconsciously, you will only see Chelsea, you will only see Samsung in this picture. This is the on-site billboard inside the stadium. In the old day, it was a wooden board. Nowadays, it's all electronic. It can fresh to make use of the advertising space to generate more money. <laughs> Technology is driven the marketing as well. In the old day, if it is a wooden board, so the entire match, or maybe the entire season, you see only one sponsors. But with electronic, we can do as many as we can. So we double, triple, or quadruple of our revenue for on-site billboard. Prenets, Galaxy, Samsung. Have you ever seen this ad? Galaxy Five now is Galaxy Nine, so it's four years ago. Messi. Cristiano Ronaldo, Owens, it's all the big shot in this picture. They make use of all the footballer to what? To promote the galaxy. Sky is now TV or cable TV in UK. They broadcast EPL, okay? If David Beckham asks you to watch EPL with Sky, will you? Yes. This is what? This is endorsement. This is also a sort of uh, marketing, just like Michael Phelps with Omega. So when celebrities say something, if you take out this David Beckham, nothing appealing to you, this advertisement. I like this picture very much. Can you tell me your feeling when you watch this picture? Emotion, passion, this is sports. 
this is the only industry can give you this kind of feeling. If I have an actor to act this, you won't have this kind of feeling. But you feel the passion of them playing soccer. You know who are they? They are the refugee. They are the refugee from the war in the camp. Spend a day on the field for football. This is the data from United States only. 480 billion per year. It is twice the size of US auto industry, double the size of motor auto industry, and seven times of movie industry. Imagine how many digits, how many money. But this is not only for games, for whatever. It includes infrastructure, building stadiums for NBA, for soccer, uh, TV rights. We have to have consumer, and then we have to generate a uh, business to generate something that involves money. So basically, the consumer is a spectator, go to the uh, events, the participants. Okay, when you watch NBA, it means you love basketball, and then you will be a participant because you play basketball. When you play basketball, you will buy a ball, you will buy a shirt, or you will buy a shoes. And then corporate or business, they will, because there's a group of people we like basketball, so there is a corporate or business, they sponsor us or they do whatever means to um, marketing their stuff through sports. And then for the products, well, it's uh, a sports product. It could be events, it could be sporting goods, it means your gears, your equipments, and it could be information. And then the, this is all the involvement of the entire business. The consumer of sports, first of all, the very, very primary is the spectator. If we think sporting event is the heart of the sports industry, spectator is your heart, a pump the butt. If we have no spectators, it means that we have no friends. If we have no friends, the sport will what? Will die. Participating, we talk about it because you have to participate. Okay, for example, I like Formula One very much. And I really like Ferrari. And if I have money, I will buy a real Ferrari. If I have no money, I go to the Formula One, raise the Ferrari fat <laughs> with all the tiffles it. And because of this, Ferrari will what? Will do the sponsorship. Because they understand if they do sponsor the Formula One to let people associate Ferrari is the best car in the world, just like a Formula One, and then they will sell more Ferraris. Goods, sporting goods, it could define as a tangible physical product. Your baseball pad, your uh, badminton racket, your table tennis ball, etc., etc., your shoes, your uh, T-shirt. Surface. Surface is, is a intangible stuff. If you go to the gym, a very muscular, very handsome gym guy goes to the ladies. My personal training is only 500 per hour, but after five hours, you will look gorgeous. Come to me. This is a surface. Sporting event. The event itself, the competition. You buy a ticket tomorrow, you go to the Rugby Sevens. This is a sporting event. Arena and stadium. When you think of a arena, it is not only the host a sporting event, not host for a NBA or a football event. Imagine Wednesday night is the EPL. What about Thursday night? What is the venue you're going to use? Empty? No. They can rent it out for other events. There's bar inside, there's a restaurant inside. People can assess it. Think beyond the venue itself. Licensed merchandise. What is this licensed merchandise? I think you, have, you, you may already came across it. Russia, World Cup. This is a World Cup t-shirt produced by Adidas. This is a licensed mer merchandise. Adidas have to pay a certain amount to FIFA to get the rights to produce this kind of thing. Finally, take a look of the online. You guys, you boys, are born on the online decade. Everything you would like to understand, everything you would like to know is from the online. So sports information is the most important thing, the most trend for the uh, upcoming sports marketing. The latest finding, this is from my 2014 Perform. Uh, Kenta and Sports Business is uh, a worldwide recognized body for sports information. And uh, this is the first time online overtaking print. That's why I always say the print is dead. And the consumption in Western Europe is going higher and higher for online consumption of sports. So, 
this is my last project when I left Eurosport two years ago. So we talk about 3D on TV broadcasting, we talk about this and that. This is what we are working on, virtual reality broadcasting of a sporting event. Imagine, imagine. If you go to NBA, you have to fly to United States and buy a ticket and then you go inside. But if you have a VR, when the broadcaster doing the uh, broadcasting, you put your VR on. You physically find yourself in the NBA uh, arena. You look at your left hand side and right hand side is very beautiful, blondy young girl or a very handsome, blondy young man. And then you look at the venue. And then you see what? You can, you can see all the scoreboard. Okay? We talk about electronic scoreboard. They, we can fresh a lot of different things. But this is more lethal, more powerful. Because all this billboard is virtual. I see the billboard, it's different to my girlfriend sees the billboard. And those billboard that I see is maybe the last week or yesterday, I Google online. I look at something very, very interesting and the billboard will show me something. No worries, no one will see your billboard. Only you will see your own billboard. <laughs> okay, and then when you're watching the game, you see the billboard, something related to your search and you press the screen you will go to the website and you can shop online while you're watching the games. This is what we are going to work for. It won't be long, something two to three years when this VR stuff lighter without the wire, uh, not that easy to distilling it, it can be launched. The technology is ready, it's very simple. It's the device, we have to make sure the device is handy enough and comfortable enough for you to watch a game for two e to three hours. Does Hong Kong have a sports market? You're studying sports management in here? It means that eventually you may go to the sports industry to find your job, to work for your career. But does Hong Kong have a sports market for you to work on? What is a sports market? We have sporting goods sales in Hong Kong. So we have all, all, all brands internationally or locally in Hong Kong. Adidas, Nike, Umbo, Reebok, you name it. So we have sporting goods. Do we have um, sports association hosting event in Hong Kong? Yes, we have rugby sevens, we have tennis, we have golf. Uh, Macau, we have the uh, Formula 3, we have the um, touring cars. So we have sporting events. Do we have stadium? Yes, the Hong Kong stadium, not really good. But in two, three years time, we have the Chiang Kuan No Sports City which is a huge project. There's a lot of opportunity by 2022 when the sports city has been built and we will host international event. The event will attract a lot of tourists in Hong Kong. And inside the sports city, we have a lot of franchisee, we have restaurant, we need to have people like you to manage the city. And then anything else we have, we have sports equipment selling in Hong Kong as well. So there's a sports market in Hong Kong, but not huge. So we look beyond Hong Kong. Hong Kong is the hub, international hub for China. So look at it beyond Hong Kong. But your first step is try to put yourself in the map of the Hong Kong sports industry. No matter eventually it's LCSD, you may become a coach, you may become a PE teacher, or you may look into 2022, you work inside the Hong Kong sports city. And then afterward, look at your career in China. Imagine, we talk about 460 billion US dollar per year in United States. How much population in China? How much population in United States? Look at the future, look at the development. There's a lot of money in front of you in sports. And sports is the only non-drama thing that is, has to watch live. Okay, when you go to TV, watch all the program you would like to watch live? News. Besides news, anything you have to watch live? Sports. If you watch a, a sporting event, it's not live, you, don't, you won't like it. Because someone next to you will tell you the score. <laughs> and you would like to hit him. So, sports will be the final entertainment for human being, And it is the most unexpected, the most passionate, and the most enjoyable sportainment.
in the coming future. Thank you.